Hello, hello everyone. Happy Friday. Um, so just so you know, I have two lives going on at the same time. So I'm going to be looking back and forth between my iPad and my iPhone. So don't mind me. I always look in weird directions anyway. And then of course I'm going to be looking in my mirror too. I'm going to be doing some makeup. Um, I apologize if the lighting is really bad. I spent some time trying to adjust it so that it's decent, but also my, I think my iPad camera is not as good as my iPhone camera. So we'll see how it goes. Um, all right. So earlier I put up a post asking you guys, uh, hello to whoever, whoever's here. Um, I put up a post earlier, um, asking which eyeshadow I should do. Hello, it's Elle. Um, and so I got a few responses. The most popular one was Antiki Bar, so I think I am going to be doing that one. Um, I have Antiki Bar and Blush Hour. Um, I get all of them from Leanne. <laughs> and then she says Coral of the Story and Antiki Bar. Hey, Stacy. Uh, and then Christina wanted to see number 34 and number eight, which is pineapple of my eye and brownie points. So just so you know, I'm bring up my handy dandy sheet here. Um, and I'm going to bring it back and forth between the two cameras that I have going on right now. So all of you can see, um, first of all, Antiki Bar is right there. It's number 19. Okay. Really, really pretty shade. And what else? The other was blush hour. That was the first one. So that's right next door right there. So these two is a combo. So that is one option. The other is Coral of the Story and Antiki Bar. So again, Antiki Bar here and right next door, the other side, Coral of the Story. So it's a little bit lighter. And what else? And then 34 and 38. So Pineapple of My Eye is right there. And then eight, I believe, was Brownie Points, which is right there. So, um, like I said, I am definitely going to do Antiki Bar since we got two votes for that. Um, so that means the other options to combine it with. Well, let's hold this up so you can see what I'm looking at, too. Blush Hour, Coral of the Story, and what else? Pineapple of My Eye. I don't think I'm going to do Antiki Bar and Brownie Points together because that's just too brown. Um, so we could do Pineapple of My Eye and Antiki Bar. Uh, blush hour in Antiki Bar or Cold of the Story in Antiki Bar. So, hey Dan, how's it going? Hey Jackie, hey Chelsea. Um, so, anybody have any thoughts on that? Chime in right now. So, let me hold this up for you because it's not like you know <laughs> everything that's there. So, definitely Antiki Bar. Uh, and then we're also looking at Blush Hour, Coral of the Story, or Pineapple of My Eye. So, I'm thinking Antiki Bar as kind of the crease shadow. I know I love Antiki Bar Chelsea. One of my favorites. So um, if anything, I'm just going to go with whatever I'm feeling. <laughs> so, all right. I'll let you guys chime in right now. If you are already typing, that's fine. Um, I Pineapple of my eye is kind of more of a nice highlight for me. Um, and it may not show too well on my lid. Do all of them, Chelsea? I know, my friend Leanne said the same thing. <laughs> she said, all of them. Actually, she said all of them as in like, all of them. <laughs> it's a little impossible. <laughs> Daniel, thank you. Going backwards in time, thanks so much. So I, I credit it to um, my skincare and thank God I became an esthetician at 30 because that's when I started to see the fine lines, and I'm like, holy crap, no, must fix. <laughs> so, um, and then, of course, acting young still, you know, that always helps. So, um, okay, decisions, decisions, decisions. Um, where's my palette? Because I need to look at these colors in person, in person, live, whatever whatever you want to call it. And oops, my desk is a little bit of a mess. 
the things are falling off. You know the cool thing is, I was looking at my desk yesterday, and um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's such a mess. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, it is full of makeup and skincare, and what's better than that? It's like, if I'm gonna have a messy desk, let it be makeup. Yeah. So, okay, so I've already pulled out two of these from my palette. I pulled out brownie points, uh, which was one of the suggestions earlier, and pink happy thoughts is what I pulled out. So, I do have the other options here. All right, so we're doing Antiki Bar, and you know earlier I was saying Coral of the Story is lighter, but it's not really. All right, so Blush Hour and Antiki Bar it is. I may throw in a little bit of pineapple on my, of my eye, and there may be to lighten it up, but we'll see. Okay, so here we go. Um, before I get started, though, I need a little bit of serum in my hair because it's annoying me. Hey, Brandon, how are you? Jackie, yes, Antiki Bar is the bomb. All right, so I'm just putting on a couple of serums in my hair, some of little must-do, and one drop wonder. And then... So I don't have any makeup on at all right now, obviously. <laughs> and I like to start off with um, a little must-do for the face. What's everybody up to this weekend? Any plans? So this must-do smells amazing. It has helichrysum oil in it, which helps protect the skin cells and repair them. And this is just a really nice sort of base to start your makeup. Just makes everything go on so smoothly. Your skin is nice and moisturized and hydrated. So let's see. I don't have our primer spray yet. So my thing that I do until I get the spray is I use our concealer, which is also a nice primer, waterproof, and um, that just kind of gives me a good place to start. And I have, this is concealer number one down here. So really great for concealing any redness and spots and I will be going back through too after I put my foundation on just to do any sort of touch-ups of spots. Uh-oh, my other phone is having connection issues. And we're back. Fabulous. Okay, and then taking my brush. Where'd you go? There you are. And just buff it in. Small little circles, nice and light. I swear this lighting is weird on my iPad. Those of you who are watching it from my personal page, sorry if the lighting is strange. And for those of you who popped on a little late, yep, I have two lives going on right now. So I'll be looking back and forth between two cameras. All right, so we got these going on and bring it down just a little bit. And then I'm doing Shinto 2 for my foundation. And that is that color right there. Just dip a little bit in. I don't know if you can really see how much I have on here since I just did the concealer. And I actually need to uh, wash these brushes. And I will soon. So I'm basically just doing the center outwards. And I'm a little haphazard about it. <laughs> what can I say? At least it gets on there. And this kind of gives a light to medium coverage. I need to look into my mirror because it's hard to see what I'm doing on the phone. All 
right, and where else I'm gonna go? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do my next concealer. This is concealer number three, right up here on the top. This one kind of has a little bit more of a salmon base, and it's fantastic at covering up dark circles. So this has been my preference. I just got this one in the mail like a couple of weeks ago, and I compared it to uh, the last concealer I was using, which was concealer number two, and the difference was amazing. Like this one just looked so much more natural. Absolutely love it. Hey, Roy, how's it going? Hey, I just texted you, Roy, did you get it? <laughs> I, I texted you last night. I need to come in for an appointment. Hey, Linwood. Oh, that's so sweet, Linwood. How, um, how old are your daughters? Roy, I need to get my hair done. <laughs> The grays are starting to show, and then as you can see, my color is starting to fade into a green now. And I'm kind of thinking of changing up the color, maybe. Maybe to a combo of uh, blue and purple. 18 and 22. Awesome! Yay! Alright, so I'm getting a little bit of this concealer on my lids, too, as a primer. Uh... All right, and there we go, I think. I might come back in and do some of the dark circles again, but I think we're good. I just get a little too, um, I, I can be a bit of, of a perfectionist when it comes to these things, so it takes me a little bit longer to get things on when things are really fine. I feel like adjusting this light again, but meh. okay, whatever. All right. What is next? What am I doing next? All right, let's do some brows and then we'll move on to my eyelids and knocking things over because that's what I do. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. You know, I had a point that I was just going to stick to a couple of um, shadows, but I just can't. <laughs> totally could but I I have stuck to two shadows the last couple of days and um, it is totally doable you don't need like a million shadows in your palette if you don't want to so um, I am using to do my brows I'm doing ready jet set go which is this one so it's kind of a, a grayish has a tint of blue in it um, it may seem strange but I've found that this really works well with my brows without it being too crazy dark or too brown that it sticks out. And I just go in and fill in the spaces. Sometimes I'll be pretty precise about it and get like a line in there to get a more defined brow, but today, no, I don't feel like it. Just want to go a little bit more natural. Roy, yes, I'll text you about your color. That sounds like great. Yeah, I um I started looking on Pinterest Roy um last night to try to get some ideas. And yeah, so I'll I'll text you or you know snapshot it and send it to you. Snap what? Screenshot it. <laughs> That's what I meant. Okay. So there we go. And I generally like to keep that light or just you know still a little sparse hey Vicki how are you and over here all right And I've found that having the right brushes makes such a huge difference. Um, okay, here we go with the eyes. Uh, okay, so did I, I did decide, didn't I? <laughs> Doing a blush hour and antique bar. So I'm gonna do, start with the antique bar. Even though it's a little bit of a shimmery color, I 
usually do more of the matte color for the shadow, but what the heck, we'll try it out. And we're gonna do this in the crease. Hey, Trisha, how are you? How'd the surgery go? And I haven't forgotten about you. I'm gonna mail your stuff soon. I'll get that ready after this live. All right, so I'm gonna go right above the crease. And I've been experimenting with different methods, so there's no right or wrong way. You just gotta play and find what works with you. And there can be several techniques that can work. So just try it out, feel it out, see how it goes. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's why your brows always look amazing. And if it's not perfect, I know I look crazy right now, but I'm going to blend it all out and it's going to be all right. So starting there, I'm kind of just wiping my brush on my palm. So that way it doesn't, the color doesn't mix in with the coral of the story. And I'm just barely dabbing it in, by the way. This stuff is so pigmented. I have not done this combination before. It's not too bad. What do you think? Add a little bit more. I'm going to blend it too, so it's not going to be crazy, crazy. Good things. Pretty sore today, but doing good. No problem. Good. Yay. Glad to hear that, Trisha. Hey Tina, how are you? So for those of you who are just jumping on, I've put on, I started out um, with a bit of a primer, or primer. Our concealer is a primer. I don't have our primer spray, so um, I just put a little bit of our Limelight Concealer on as a primer and then some foundation. Um, I know it doesn't look like it, that's why I wanted to let you know. I do have it on. So wait, there it is. It's my little blender brush. And I'm just gonna blend this in. Blend, blend, blend. It's definitely the trick. Alright, I wanna hear about weekend plans, y'all. Let me know. I need to be entertained. All right, so yeah, this is um, a nice, natural sort of look. Kind of muted. Good for the fall, right? So, we got that going. Um, hmm. <laughs> Before I finish up, I kind of want to jump down over to um, my cheeks. Um, just because that's what I'm feeling right now. And for this... I'll go ahead and do our number one alive blush, which is this. This is more of a matte color. It looks pretty dark, but it doesn't go on crazy dark. So we'll start right here, bring it down and up. And again, this lighting is very strange and it looks weird on camera. Not much for me. Recovery, rest through tomorrow, and back to work on Sunday. Wow, back to work already? That's amazing. But hey, resting is good. It's too bad Gilmore Girls isn't on. I would totally be resting and watching that. Then again, there's always the Netflix series, so that works. Or, you know, the series running on Netflix. All right. That will work. 
I'm down. It's very hard limiting myself to just a few colors. I'm spoiled. Okay, um, and, all right. So next we're gonna do the eyeliner. This is a liquid eyeliner. Um, this does not have a felt tip. So that's a really cool thing. This is more of a brush and this is new and I have trouble opening it and my hands are crazy moisturized so that doesn't help. There we go, open. So, and I'm just gonna, excuse me, do, um, I'm, I'm gonna make it really simple. I'm not gonna be doing a wing, not today. Unless you bug me about it, but I don't know. <laughs> I think we're gonna keep it simple today because I just want, I don't wanna put that stress on myself. All right, so. I'm just going to be taking tiny little strokes starting from the center and then go outwards. And I have to show you the tip of this pen because it is so good. And my hand's really shaky from coffee too. Trish, I work Sunday and Monday and have the next three days off. Seriously, I'm super impatient for being here in the life. I know. I know. So excited about it. I know, you can really tell. <laughs> With my expressionless face and voice as I'm putting on eyeliner. All right, there you go. There's your wing. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> So this kind of the cool thing about this though is that um, this eyeliner is very fixable as you put it on so stays wet for like a minute or less and then as soon as it dries it stays put not going anywhere so it's awesome. Hey Trisha, another Trisha. <laughs> All right, let me get the other eye. This side is usually easier for me to do. Okay, that's it. Yep. See, super, super simple. Um, and then I'm going to do my bottom line, but I'm just going to do kind of a, let me show you this. You can see it. There you go. Look how fine that tip is. So this is a brush. It is not a felt tip pen. So it's really nice. You're just painting it on. It goes on evenly and smoothly. Trisha, I have such eyeliner envy. I'm legally blind in my left eye and farsighted in my right. So one eye is perfect and the other eye looks like a three-year-old did it. Aw. <laughs> Too funny. I don't think I even knew that about you, Trisha. And when you go over this too, um, it gets darker, which is nice. All right. And I'm gonna do my bottom eyes with this. Bottom eyes, bottom lashes. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Rosalind. Okay go over here. So the method that I'm doing is just I'm going to be dotting it like that but I'm going to use my mirror. It's going to give the appearance of fuller lashes. This eye always always waters every single time. Okay. So sorry if you can't see what I'm doing right now. And I'm just dotting the ends of my lashes, trying to go just below the waterline. And a little bit will go up into the waterline, but I'll go and wipe it out, blend it out, whatever. Okay. So, nice easy way to get fuller looking lashes and, you know, 
just looks like regular eyeliner. So I'll go and do the other eye. Hey Linwood, if you're still there, you should get your daughters to follow me or friend me. I'm happy to accept. I always get a little impatient with this too because they're just dotting, 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 dotting. And I'm like, I just wanna be done already. but it's totally worth it. I feel like this lasts longer for me. Usually eyeliners, when I put it on, it just, it'll go away. And part of it could be because I'm putting it on the waterline. So, um, but even when I try to do it like right underneath, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it just looks like a mess and then it disappears. So this has been my favorite method. So there you go. Nice simple look right there. First of all, I need to try that technique tonight dotting. Yes. It's so good. Um, I think I've tried it up here. I can't remember if I have or not, but honestly what I like better is um, doing a tight line up there with uh, some eyeshadow. So I'll probably, I'm going to do that now. Ha <laughs> ha. Michelle, how long does it take to become a makeup artist? I cannot tell you because I am not a makeup artist. <laughs> I am an esthetician. Um, I don't have a certified make or a makeup artist certification. Uh, it is something that I'm thinking about doing um, possibly next year. Um, but yeah, I, I think every program is different. Um, if you went through esthetician school or cosmetology school, you know, you can absolutely, absolutely apply makeup on people. You're allowed to touch people's faces, uh, at least here in the state of California. Um, but for me to go through makeup, uh, makeup artist certification or makeup certification is for me just to learn a bit more and, and refine my technique. So as of right now, I depend on the limelight community because we have a lot of makeup artists there. So um, it's been really, really fun learning from everyone. So that's that's where I'm getting my tips and tricks. Uh, let's see, Trish. Uh, yeah, I found out eighth grade, but lost my glasses for a while. Actually got the, oops, gonna have to click on see more. Hang on a second. Actually got the ones I wear now about two years ago after the After Dark Vegas shows and to see pictures where I didn't have my glasses. It doesn't look like me anymore. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I used to wear glasses too and contacts, but I got LASIK done in 2004. That was the best money I've ever spent. But it's just, it's funny looking at pictures of myself with glasses. I'm like, wow, totally doesn't look like me. So anyway, um, all right, got eyeliner done. So now I got to do La or yeah, my lashes, and uh, oh, I want to do a tight line and then lashes, yeah, mascara, lashes, <laughs> and uh, and then lips. So, bringing out my pointy brush again, and I'm gonna go in for. All right, see, we're going in for a fourth. No, we'll do ready jet set go again. So I'm doing a total of three eyeshadows. So again, it is this lightish, no, not the light one, the darker <laughs> gray with um, a hint of blue. And for people who have eye phobia things, look away right now, and I apologize, because I'm gonna be lifting up my lid to get up there. So here we go, and I'm just going really close to the lashes, not too much into the waterline. And again, this is going to help give a fuller look to the lashes. I used to do this with a liquid liner. And it does feel weird the first time you do it, but you get used to it. 
Can you see the difference between the two eyes right now? Does this look fuller to you? It looks fuller to me. I can see it. <laughs> hey, Amy. Um, Trisha. I usually just line my upper eye because it's easier. Should do the bottom lashes. Uh, should the bottom lashes be lined as well, or is that just a look for night? It's totally up to you, Trisha. Um, it's all about preference, personal preference. So I like it just because it makes my eyes look complete. <laughs> <laughs> like anytime I don't do the bottom lashes, like I feel like the bottom of bottoms of my eyes just kind of fade away. I don't know. It just doesn't, for me, it doesn't look complete. So I like to get the bottom line if I can, even if I do, sometimes I'll just go part way in and kind of just let it fade towards that end. And then it's just clear right here, but it just kind of gives a little bit more definition to the eye. That's what I like about it. So all right, so I'm gonna do the tight line on the other eye. Seeing notifications pop up. Distracting me. And there we go. So, all right, so finally, well, not really finally, at least finally for my eyes, I'm going to do some mascara. I'm going to step away for a second because my mascara is somewhere else. Um, all right, I will be right back. And I'm here. And uh, yeah, so uh, this mascara is nice and warm right now. This is actually a very fresh tube. Um, so it's the first time I'm opening it, and um, it, it, it's nice when you can get the mascara nice and warm because it's going to go on a lot easier. And when you pull it out, you want to swirl, 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 swirl. And I'm going to bend this just a touch so that way I have a nice bend to the mascara. And if you want to know where I had this mascara, actually, let me get, we're going to start with the top or top, yeah, top part of the lashes. This mascara was actually sitting in my bra. So, um, yeah, it is <laughs> nice and warm right now. I wasn't about to whip it out in front of the camera. So, so I'm just wiggling this wand. This mascara has fibers in it, so this is going to give you a bit of fullness to the lashes. I will wiggle and blink my way through application. And sometimes I will hold and kind of curl it up and curl the wand up. It just gives a little bit more lift to my lashes. If I wanted to, after it dries, I could go in and take a curler to it. Um, I'm not at this moment, but um, but yeah, for me, my my lashes won't take a curl if it just if I do it before the mascara, it just doesn't. So it works better for me when I wait for it to dry, I curl it, and then I do a second coat. And there's so many different application methods, even for this. Um, people just have to find their own way and what works for their lashes and how much is going to work. Because some pe people can't, their lashes can't hold this much mascara and then it ends up looking like crap. I forgot to do the top part but that's okay. Ta-da! And I'm gonna do another coat on the other eye. Amy, where are you? I am in my bedroom, Amy. <laughs> so this is my little creative corner. 
Um, I do that. Well, it's an antique bar. Antique bar is um, one of the shadows that I used. I used it for the darker shadow that's kind of blended in right now. And this is, so this mascara can be buildable, but like I said, it just depends on how much your lashes can take. I've definitely built this up so that it looked almost like fake lashes. And I want to retouch my liner. I won't do it here on this live. I'll just do it later. So, and swirling, 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 swirling. And by the way, I'll bring this up to the camera a little bit. Pardon my shaky hands. Let's see, bring the hand up. All right, see those fibers there? So that is all in one tube. Show my other camera. Erica, how are you? Alright, I'm just doing a little bit more just on the tips. So that's the thing, if you're going to be going in and layering this more and trying to build it up, if your lashes can take it, just do the tips. Because um, if you're going in to do the base, again, it's just going to weigh it down. Okay, this is not working over here. I have a couple of lashes that are being stubborn. All right. Okay, so lashes are done. I could do the bottoms if I want to, but eh, don't feel like it. So last, lastly, we have lips. I'm gonna start with lip liner and this one is lip liner number one which is one of our nude lip liners this is um a little bit darker than the other nude which is the number two liner and you could if you wanted to fill in the rest of your lips but i'm not gonna do that um all right, and we've got we've got lipstick next. We're gonna do one of our new lipsticks, and there's a choice. I'm gonna just bring it down to two choices because these are my newest ones, and I'm very excited about it. One of them just fell on the floor, so hang on. Whoops. Um, there you are. Okay. That's not the one. Is this the one? That is not the one. This is the one, yes. Okay. So, what we have for our lipstick choices. Hey, Kisha, how are you? It's so funny you just came on because one of these lipstick choices reminds me of you. And I'll tell you why in a minute. We have Not Telling, which is a nude lipstick, and we have Plum Luck, which is kind of a little bit more of a purplish. And this is kind of a sheer color. It's not a full coverage. So it's very light and pretty and very autumn-y. So both of these are good for autumn. So um, tell me which one do you want to see? And I will wait. For some responses. Um, and while I wait, I will tell you, Kesha, the reason why I was just thinking of you and why these one of these lipsticks reminds me of you, it's the nude one, because um, Kesha was the first one to take me out lipstick shopping. And so the first lipstick I got was a nude, because 
we were talking to the cosmetics lady and she told her, yeah, she doesn't really wear a lot of makeup. And so the lady was like, all right, you should go for the nude. And I was like, awesome. And so that was my very first lipstick and I absolutely loved it. So Trisha, Plum Luck. Cool. One vote for Plum Luck. Anybody else? So, yeah. So when I got this nude Kisha, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like my first lipstick. Do, 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 do. Gonna wait a little bit. I love both of these, by the way. I put both of these on and with each one, I was like, oh my gosh, so good. Rosalind, Plum Luck, cool. Plum, Erica, yay. All right, we're gonna go with Plum Luck. It's actually what I was kind of leaning towards too. So, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so this is Plum Luck. So again, like I said, this is sheer. If you do one swipe of it, it's pretty sheer. And then if you layer it on, then it'll start to get a little bit more of a full coverage. So see, nice and light and natural. And the very cool thing about this is that it's a nice creamy lipstick. Very moisturizing, especially for somebody who loves lip balms and glosses. I could not do any lipsticks because they're always so drying. Um, it always left a waxy feel and, um, and there's also petroleum in a lot of lipsticks, which is also in gasoline, which is very gross. Um, this does not have petroleum in it, no parabens. So it's fantastic and it leaves a little bit of a stain on your lips. So especially if you're going to be, if you put a couple of layers on, it's going to leave a stain. Um, the only way it's going to break down is if you eat something with oil in it, and then that's going to break it down. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Just finishing up my look here, but um, just put on some Plum Luck lipstick, put on one coat of it, and uh, hey, Katrina. And uh, so I'm just going to do a second coat so you can see the more full coverage because one coat is just sheer at least for the plum luck so that is two so the colors that are in the 200s this one's 202 um, that's those are the sheer lipsticks uh, the colors that are in the 100s are full coverage so but like I said the sheer ones buildable totally totally buildable I didn't even know the first lipstick that I had was a sheer one. And um, it just gave a really nice color. Um, but, you know, and I added it on just because my lips are always dry, so it's great for getting that moisture. And at the end of the day, it's like, I think I applied it maybe twice, three times at the most, but I think it was just twice for the day. And at the very end of the night, my lips were still good. So I was like, yes knew I had a winner. So yeah, so that's the plum look. What do you guys think? Very nice. I like it. So yeah, so anyway, so that is about it. I try to stay as minimal as possible um, with everything that I used. I did splurge a little bit in my eyeshadow use. <laughs> um, but what I used, I, I meant to put everything all just in one palette. But since we were deciding on the last couple of eyeshadows, thanks Katrina, um, you can kind of just ignore the eyeshadows that are in here. But I used, hang on, we'll just bring this out. Thanks Trisha. I'm gonna read your previous message in a second. So the winners of the eyeshadow vote earlier was Antiki Bar, which was this color right here. It's kind of a nice shimmery sort of color. Um, usually I'll, I'll stick to this just with the lids, but it worked pretty well in the crease. So um, I used that in combination with Blush Hour. And um, if I were to bring it down into the Essentials palette or what's called the Teen Collection, I probably, I don't know. It, well, anyway, it would have been two eyeshadows. I would have tried to pick... Um, a crease color that I could also use for my brows, but oh well. 
So I used another color here for the brows, which was ready, jet, set, go. Hang on, I can't hold two things at once. <laughs> All right, so that was the ready, jet, set, go for my brows. Um, even though it's a gray and kind of has like a bluish tint to it, it just blends in very easily. And doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, did I, I can't remember. I might've used a different color. No, I did use a ready, jet, set, go for the eyeliner like with inside with inside my eye, what, within my lash line. Um, all right, and then these two concealers, concealer number one, concealer number three on the top, Shinto for my foundation, and this is number one alive for the blush. Um, the essentials kit, in case you missed my live the other day, what it comes with, hang on a second. So I kind of changed it up a bit, but that's okay. As far as my demonstration goes today, it's okay. Um, so this is what, if you wanted to get started with a nice kit, this is the one to get. It's the Teen Collection. Don't like the name, but um, it will give you the foundation, the blush, or you can change it up to a powder or a bronzer, um, two concealers, and two eyeshadows. So you can do a lot just with that. Um, this is the palette that I've been using the last few days, and it's been working beautifully. So I've used, I used this light pink one, which is called, hang on a second, Pink Happy Thoughts. It's number 36. I've been using that for my main lid, and then Brownie Points, number 8, as the crease, as well as for my brows and eyeliner. And um, you need the two concealers because you do want something that's good for the under eyes and then the other concealer to help cover any redness, hyperpigmentation, and that sort of thing. And it also doubles as a nice primer before you put your foundation on. Um, and if you like, if your foundation isn't like the perfect shade for your skin, you can mix it with the concealer or concealers to get your perfect shade, which is awesome. So um, so that, and then you would get a lip gloss. And then all you would need to really complete the look is mascara, or you could get an eyeliner. And so this by itself is 104. Um, these are 18 a piece, so whichever you would mix and match it with. You know, it's pretty good for everything that you're getting and for how long it's going to last. Like all of this should last you between four months, six months to a year at the very most. So depending on how much you use the foundation, it'll last you a really, really, really long time. <laughs> so, cause a little bit goes a very long way. Um, anyway, yeah, that's it. So then I use the lipstick for myself, but anyway, um, and what else? Oh, I was going to read your thing, Trisha. Okay. Um, so a chapstick or gloss, if I'm feeling a fancy person, I've yet to find a lipstick that feels nice on me. Other, other than if I'm doing theater, definitely need lipstick for that. Yeah, I know. I think theater was the only time that I really used a lipstick. Um, I tried it a couple other times and it just always felt gross on my lips and I always reached out for the gloss or chapstick afterwards so this is the perfect combination for those people who are used to chapstick lip gloss it's awesome this is what I'm reaching for now like you saw like I was more excited about the lipstick than you know reaching out for the gloss so anyway so I hope this helped everyone um and I hope you had fun thanks for joining me and I um, hope you have a wonderful Friday, great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.